Hi, I'm Ivan from Webwash, and in this video, I will show you how to use two plugins that can help you track user and site activity on your WordPress site. Tracking site activity is useful if you have a few editors or even if you allow users to log in and register. It allows you to see when users are logging in, when they have forgotten their password or even used the wrong password. And it also can track if content has been changed. So if something has changed on your WordPress site, you can go back to the activity log and see who made the change. The first plugin we'll look at is called Activity Log. And this one is a free one. And here you can see the actual project page. And in this section, you can see exactly what it logs. So it can log core updates. It can also log if a post or page has been created, updated or deleted, changes to tags, user, um, even, even plugin changes, um, theme changes, widgets, and it also integrates with WooCommerce and BBPress. So let's jump into my WordPress site and install it and have a play with it. So I'll go to plugins and then click on add plugin and I'll search for activity log and it's this one that we are interested in. And I'll click on install and then activate. Once the plugin has been activated, you should see this activity log option below dashboard. And from this table, you will see all of the logged activities. So right now we can see that it has logged itself being activated. Let me now open up another browser so we can test out the activity and I will move it to the left and our activity log is there on the right. And if we go to our site as an anonymous user, so so that means we haven't logged in and we add in a comment. So let me just quickly throw in a comment and then click on post comment. And then if we refresh the activity log here, we can see that a comment has been added and it is set to pending. And then if we were to try and log in, let me go in here and log in with a fake username and password. You can see that that has been logged. And if we try and log into the admin account, it will tell us as well that the login has failed. And then if I expand this browser again, and then we go to post, and let me quickly just make a change to this content page. So I'll just add in an extra few words at the end and then click on update. And then if we go back to the dashboard and then activity log, we can see that the user admin, which is the account that I'm currently logged in as, has updated and you can see update under action. I have updated this post and then we can go in there and edit and view what has been changed. If you click on settings, from this page, you can change the activity log settings there aren't that many options, to be honest. The most important is how long you wanna keep the logs for. Because just remember, every single action on your site is getting logged. So if you have a high traffic site, you may have some performance issues, especially if your hosting hasn't been optimized for this stuff. And also if you have your website publicly accessible, straight away, you will notice that bots are trying to log in to your site. So from the settings page, you can actually adjust how long you want to keep the logs for. And in my opinion, I think 30 days is a bit too long because you end up with a table with thousands and thousands of rows, especially if your site is publicly accessible, which most WordPress sites will be because there are a lot of bots trying to log into your site. So I will change this down to seven. Um, and then of course you can keep the failed logs as well, or, or you know, if you don't wanna keep them. And then finally, if you wanna reset the database, you can do so by clicking on reset. If we click on reset right here, then we can no longer see any logs in this activity log. So that is a quick overview of the activity log plugin. You can't really customize things, but it does its job. It tracks your site activity. Now let's look at another plugin called WP activity log. 
And this one has a free version as well as a paid premium version. And then if we scroll down on the project page, we can see everything that it tracks. So it changes to post pages, custom post types, tag categories, settings, site activity, plugin changes, theme changes, and so on and so forth. Let's jump back to our site and then go to plugins, click on add new, and then I'll search for WP activity log, and then I'll click on install. Now, before I activate this plugin, let me just scroll down and show you that WP activity log also integrates with other plugins. So here we have WP activity log for WooCommerce, for Yoast SEO, for WP Forms, Gravity Forms, and also for BB Press. So WP activity log integrates with a lot of stuff. So let's go all the way back up and activate the plugin. When you activate the plugin, you are given this wizard to configure the plugin. So let's go ahead and click on yes, and then click on start configuring the plugin. And here we have two options, either basic or geek. Let's select geek because we wanna see absolutely everything. And then here it asks you which login page you are going to use. Let's just leave that as it is. And then on this step, it just asks, can users register? Let's just leave that. No. And then here straight away, it asks you how long you wanna keep the logs for. Now, it's important to understand that if you have a high traffic WordPress site, you may not wanna keep all the logs unless you have to, because you will end up with a lot of data. So just be aware of that. Let's just leave that as it is. After we have activated the plugin and also gone through the wizard, we should see the WP activity log here on the left. And from this page, we can view all of the activity on the site so far after the plugin has been enabled. And you can see that it has tracked that it has been installed itself. And then if we go to post and let me edit this post and chuck in another paragraph, hit update. And then if we go back to WP activity, we can see that the content has been modified, but it's also been opened as well. So WP activity log tracks a lot of stuff. And then if we jump into our previous browser and try and log in, let me just log in to the admin account, try that a few times. And then refresh, I can see that there have been four failed attempts on the admin user account. If you want to configure the plugin, just click on settings and straight away you'll notice that compared to activity log, WP activity log has a lot of options, way more than the previous plugin. If you click on exclude objects, this allows you to exclude certain users or roles or even post types from being logged. So you may be in a situation where you don't want absolutely every piece of content to be logged. If that's the case, you can come here and exclude certain things from being logged. If you click on advanced settings from this page, you can reset the settings and you can also purge all of the activity log. Now be careful when you purge the activity log because it will delete content and there's no way of getting it back unless you want to restore from backup. So just be aware of that. And then if we click on activity log viewer, here you can configure the activity log retention. So how long you want to keep the logs for. Now, as I previously mentioned, if you have a high traffic site, you may want to adjust this slightly. So instead of keeping six months worth of logs, because that will be hundreds of thousands of rows, especially if your site is publicly accessible, again, being a WordPress site, I can guarantee it's going to be publicly accessible. You will get a lot of bots trying to log into your site. So you may want to adjust this accordingly just to see how big the log table gets. And then from general, you can adjust a bunch of stuff. And then here it tells you if the option is only available for premium. Now, I should also mention that if we go to log viewer, 
using the free plugin, there's no way of filtering this page. If you wanna filter this page, you will have to get the premium version. Another thing which I also wanna quickly show you is that if you click on this inspector icon on any of these log messages, it'll show you more information about the log. So here we can see the user agent of the user who's been trying to log in. And then if we go to another option here, we can see the post type, title, URL, and also the event type, and also the post date as well. So if you wanna see the log in more detail, just click on the inspector icon. The final feature I wanna show you is how you can enable or disable which events get logged. So if you click on enable slash disable events, from this page, you can see all of the available events. So here we have user logged in, user logged out, and also logged in failed. And then on the left, we have a checkbox. If it's checked, it means that that event will be logged. So you can see that pretty much everything is being logged. And we do have a lot of events. So if you want this event, new user was created on WordPress to not be logged, all you need to do is uncheck the checkbox, scroll down and click on save changes. And this means that the system won't log if a new user has been created. So that is a quick overview of WP Activity Log. Now, which one should you use? This plugin or Activity Log? Well, if you are looking for a free solution, both work pretty well. The only extra advantage of using Activity Log is that you can filter the log table, whereas the free version of WP Activity Log doesn't allow you to filter the log messages. So just be aware of that. But if you are happy to pay for this plugin, then I highly recommend WP Activity Log. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna learn more about WordPress and Drupal, head over to webwash.net and also check out the other videos on this channel. And also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.